Hi everybody, today we're gonna to learn about bubble sort, one of the most popular sorting algorithms. It's not popular because it's fast, it's actually quite a slow algorithm in the grand scheme of things, but it does introduce some interesting concepts on how to calculate the performance and how to analyze its ability to sort values, which are more foundational and will help you better understand not just other sorting algorithms, but other patterns in code that might be running into as well. That's a good one for us to get to the bottom of. Now, before I get into the details of bubble sort, I just wanna take a step back and let you know that if you wanna learn more about data structures and algorithms in great detail while still being very clear and concise, check out my best-selling book, Algorithms Absolute Beginner's Guide, available in physical bookstores, virtual bookstores, and the book is also available in digital editions in Kindle and other formats, so definitely check it out. And now let's go ahead and talk about bubble sort. If I had to very quickly describe how bubble sort works, it is as follows. Bubble sort repeatedly steps through a list or a collection of data. It compares adjacent elements and swaps them if they're in the wrong order. So if I'm comparing two values, the first value is larger, the second value is smaller, I would swap it to make sure the smaller value appears first. And this is assuming I'm sorting from smallest to largest. And the best way to, of course, put all those words into practice is to actually look at an example. So here we have our unsorted values and we're dealing with numbers again. And in this collection, we have 62091744. And our goal is to use bubble sort to sort these values from smallest to largest. So it seems like a pretty straightforward mission for us to embark on. So the first thing we do with bubble sort is we always compare adjacent values. So the first thing we do here is the first two adjacent values are the six and the two. And so we compare them. And what we do when we compare is we ask ourselves, is the first value less than or greater than the second value? In this case, it's not. Six is not greater than two. So we just swap the values. So now two and six are the new arrangement for the first two values. So time for the next step. We move to the next pair of adjacent values, and this time it will be the six and the zero. And we ask ourselves the exact same question. Are these two in the sorted order where the first number is smaller than the second number? As we can see, six is not less than zero, so we do a swap. And so now the new arrangement is zero and six then we repeat the process again. And you probably start to see a pattern emerging. Our next two adjacent numbers are six and nine. In this case, six is less than nine, so they're already sorted. Great, let's move on to the next set of values. And as we keep going through this over and over again, you will see that we look at nine and one, nine is less than, I'm sorry, greater than one, so we swap it. Then we have one and nine. One and nine again is also the, the right wrong order, sorry, nine and seven, wrong order. So we swap them, so now it becomes seven and nine. And we keep repeating this over and over again for every step until we reach the end of the list where the nine value that we ran into earlier is now currently the item at the last position, which makes sense because it is the largest value that we have. And this is one iteration a bubble sort. We went through the entire version of it from the beginning to the end and sort of the values that we currently see. Now, what we do next is we probably start from the beginning again, where we have the first adjacent values, and we keep sorting over and over and over again until we end up with a fully sorted list. And in this case, with the numbers we had before, the fully sorted list would be 0, 1, 2, 4, 4, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Now, when do we know that our uh, values are all fully sorted? We know they're sorted when we go through a collection without having to do any swapping. No swapping operation was done at any point. So if we go through this one, you can see that the first two adjacent pairs, zero and one, proper order, one and two, proper order, two and four, four and four, four and six, six and seven, seven and eight, eight and nine, are all in the proper order where the first value is less than the second value, which means that no swaps need to be done. In this case, bubble sort will just consider this particular iteration as having run through a sorted list of values. Now, when you take a look at this, you're probably wondering why is it called bubble sort? You know, what at what point are we actually bubbling any value? You know, it seems like a strange number. Is it named after someone whose name happens to contain bubble in it? And no, the answer is far more, far more boring than that. When we saw our list earlier walk through the values, 
we know that nine was the largest value. Notice what happens at each iteration when we are actually comparing values when the nine is the when the largest value is encountered. Notice that when the when you saw nine, the second time we did a comparison, nine moved over one spot. When we do the next comparison, nine moved again. And this is a natural behavior where the largest value is always going to be the one that's going to be right of the smaller value. So with each comparison, the number nine slowly gets moved to the very end where it belongs. And this slowly moving part can be considered, uh, another name for it is bubbling. We're bubbling the largest value to the very end of our list. Now, sometimes you might even see bubble sort referred to as sinking sort. And the exact same behavior applies. You know, one could imagine that what we're doing here with the nine tick in the beginning and going to the end is kind of like sinking that value towards the end of our collection. So depending on whether the end of a collection is bubbling or whether the end of the collection is sinking, the name is going to vary. But the most popular name for this, what we're seeing here is bubble sort. So just know that if you ever see sinking sort, it's referring to bubble sort as well. So the nine, the largest value bubbles. And just to be more complete, the next time this whole you know, bubble sort runs on the on this list, we'll find the eight is needs to be the one at the very end. It already happens to be conveniently at the right spot. But then seven will slowly bubble to the very end. Then six will bubble to the end. And then the two fours will bubble to the end. The two will bubble to the end. And the zero will bubble to the end, being the last value that remains. And that gets us our sorted value. Now, in me describing how that sort operation works, you could probably reason out that there's a whole lot of comparisons that are happening, there's a whole lot of cycling that happens as well. And that results in the somewhat slow behavior of bubble sort. You can see that the best case, the time complexity is linear. We'll talk about why, when that is the case. Worst case, it is n squared. Average case, again, is also n squared because we do a comparison and each time we do a comparison on each number, we then repeat that process one more time with the slightly smaller list of sorted values. And the space complexity for all these is constant and we'll talk about that very briefly as well. And so we said the best case is linear time sorting time complexity for this particular algorithm. And that's because when we already have a fully sorted collection, all we're doing is just going through and validating that for each adjacent pair of values, the left number is smaller than the right number. The first value is smaller than the second value. And as long as that's the case, there's no need to go back and loop through that loop multi a collection multiple times. So we're good, linear time it is. Now, in both the average and worst case scenarios where values may not be in the right sort of location, we're gonna have to make multiple passes on our data. And that naturally leads to n comparisons, n iterations. So n squared is the value that you get there. And uh, to be more precise though, if we had explained that mathematically, in the first pass that we're going through, we have n minus one comparisons. In the second time we do n minus two, third time we do n minus three, all the way to the last pass where you have only one value that needs to be compared and swapped, you have one comparison. And as it turns out, this is a very popular kind of an algorithm. It's the arithmetic series. So if we had to add up n minus one plus n minus two plus n minus three, all the way up to when we have a value of just one, this can be simplified as follows. And you know you can look at the equation here. I'm not gonna walk through it in great detail, but the with big O notation, as we saw in our earlier video on big O notation, we only care about the most significant factor. So if this equation is like n squared over two minus n over two, the most significant factor here is the n squared. So we kind of ignore everything else. I would just say it's big O of n squared. So the arithmetic series expression can be simplified into big O of n squared for what we're trying to do here. Now space complexity I mentioned earlier, it's constant time. And it's because we are iterating and looping through the exact same collection as it is. It's an in-place algorithm. There's no extra data structures we're modifying or doing work on. And so the amount of space we take up never changes. It's just a, a constant set of values. And so to learn how bubble source is actually implemented, it has a JavaScript implementation. I instead of writing to and walking through code on screen, which is never quite fun, just go to my tutorial on this on bubble sort, a detailed deep dive. It's on crypto.com. Easiest way to get to it is just go to Google, type in Krupa bubble sort, and you'll see my answer coming very, or my article on this coming up 
very quickly. And so overall, if I had to describe bubble sort, it's a, not a great algorithm. It's cool, it's easy to explain, and it has some interesting techniques, both mathematically from a performance analysis point of view, but also in how you implement it that can be used in other situations. But overall, bubble sort is slow, and there aren't too many situations where you want to use it over any of the other faster sorting algorithms. And so if you have any questions about how bubble sort works or anything in general about web development or data structures and algorithms, post in the forums at formnetgroup.com where I and others will be very happy to help you out to be notified of more videos I create along this topic or other related topics. Like, comment, and subscribe on this video. Let your friends and enemies know that you've been watching this. Sign up for the newsletter to be able to get some updates in your inbox on topics around design, development, and business. Follow me at Krupa on Twitter or X as the cool kids call it these days for more bite-sized updates on what I'm working on that you might find relevant. And lastly, I have a lot more books than just data structures and algorithms that I talked about earlier. So covering a bunch of other topics. So check this out, all of them available in physical book form and in digital book form in pretty much anywhere books are sold. Links to all of that below. And with that, I will see you all next time.